Today we're going to take a look at these universal seat heaters. Basically we're going to add heated seats to seats that did not have heated seats built into them. This particular kit is sold by Dorman. They're kind of huge in the world of aftermarket parts. Some of their stuff is good, some of their stuff is bad, but I find their heated seats are okay. They work pretty well and they seem to be pretty reliable. I've used them in the past and they're pretty easy to install. As usual, I will put links down below to everything that I used in this video. The kit comes with everything you see on the table. It comes with two heating pads. That's for the back and the lower part of the seat. If you have two seats, you need to buy another box. The box only includes enough to do one seat. It comes with a wiring harness. It's very very simple. It looks a little daunting, but we're going to talk about the wiring harness here in a second. It also comes with upholstery rings and an upholstery ring tool to get those off and put them back on. It comes with some zip ties and a manual. It's pretty simple. Not much to the kit. The wiring harness is basically nothing more than, well, wires, a switch. It does have a relay that controls the different temperature features. You have a high and a low with this model. It gives you a tap, so if you don't have a place to pick up accessory power, you can use this as basically a fuse tap. You put this behind the fuse, you shove it in the fuse, panel and then you plug your wire into it that's what this looks like right here so that way it makes that wiring really easy if you don't have any way to grab a hold of accessory power pretty much everything you see except for the hot wire in the ground gets tucked away underneath the seat even the relay uh, you drill a little hole somewhere on the plastic part of your seat and you pop this through so you can reach it the manual shows you sticking it kind of right here on the side i assume like maybe on the right side where you could reach down and turn it on and off or high and low other than that it's pretty much that simple. Really the major difficult part is installing the pads themselves because you have to remove the fabric of your seats. It's easier to remove the seat from the vehicle like I have here. These seats are actually out of a 350. I've removed them and put them on my workbench. We're gonna put the pads underneath the material and then hook these back up and try them out. Everybody's seats are gonna be a little bit different so you're gonna to have to just kind of reverse engineer it, figure out how it was put together before you can dismantle it. I have a older pickup truck, it's from 2001. It's off of my Super Duty and and they have plastic backs that just kind of snap off that gives you access to the inside and then I have these little webbing things that you just kind of remove and then it makes taking the upper part of the seat really easy to get to they just kind of fold back and you can just unpeel the material slip that pad up on the front and put the material back together and then I'm going to pull one corner away and I'm going to keep the other corner kind of tucked down in there and I'm going to slip the pad up underneath and stick it in place the back side of the pads do have a sticky material it's basically a two-way sticky tape you just peel the plastic off and you stick it in place and and at this point, we just start reworking our fabric around our seat and reconnecting all those little clips and pieces that hold the fabric on. As far as the power cable goes, you're gonna need to let it hang kind of right out the back side here. I like to put mine kind of in a corner and I wanna make sure it's not gonna get pinched anywhere. This seems like a fine spot. Now we're ready to put the plastic cover back on the back and the back part of the seat is done. As far as the bottom of the seat goes, you're gonna treat it exactly the same way. In my case, I have some webbing here that gets unclipped from the metal seat base. It'll just unfold backwards and we'll be able to pull it right off through the front, put the heating pad in, put everything back together and we're ready to start working on the electronics. Now it's important to know that you cannot trim these particular heating pads. The way they are designed, if you cut them, they'll quit working. You also can't fold them, at least per the instructions that says if you fold them, they will fail prematurely. These particular pads are about 12 inches by 12 inches and they fit perfectly in this particular seat. Once you have everything buttoned up, you're gonna to wanna to take that wiring harness and zip tight to the bottom of the seat somewhere. Go ahead and plug your upper and lower into the wiring harness. Now at this point, you only have two things left. You have to mount the power switch and you have to get power to that wiring harness. The manufacturer suggests that you draw a 20 millimeter hole somewhere on the plastics of your seat. So this would probably be a good spot. And then the switch itself is designed to just kind of snap in place. So you unplug it, push it into that 20 millimeter hole, put your wiring harness back on and it's good to go. Hooking it up is really simple. You just need to take the brown cable and give it a ground somewhere. And then as far as power, just go to your accessories and give it some power. It really doesn't use a whole lot of electricity. It only has a 10 amp fuse in it. I actually think it only pulls about four or five amps when the seats are actually on, but you do need to give it power. So the cable they give you is plenty long to pretty much go anywhere you need in the car as long as you're doing this in the front seats. If you're using the back seats, you might have to modify the cable some. Now I have these installed and I'm going to shoot them with my infrared camera and show you how well they're working. Now I was able to wire mine into a custom control panel and I have mine set up so I can give my back heat only because sometimes I have back problems and I just want heat on the back only. I can also flip that switch the other direction and I have heat on both the back and the seat. Now this also gives me the temperature at high. I don't get the option of low and high. I suppose if I feel that's an issue, I could go back and change them up a little bit. But right now we're gonna run them like this and see how well we like them. I'm really happy with the way these heated seats turned out and they were really simple to install. They feel just as good as factory heated seats that I've 
I've said in. They're relatively inexpensive at about $40 per seed and you can buy them just for one seed if you would like. And again, I bought them on Amazon. I will put a link down below. If you like these types of videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. Take a look at some of my other videos and at the very least, you might be entertained.